Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video about this model here. Well, not just this model here, actually. Lots and lots of INAV planes and wings that you might be setting up and getting into this particular pickle. Now, I'm making this video because I've had a couple of people request it. And actually, I had a comment from somebody this morning as I'm making the video over in Blackpool Way, I think it was. I can't find his comment now. But he's just the latest chap who is coming into wings from things like quads, starting to play with things like INAV and getting a bit confused with this particular issue. Well, it's not an issue. It's actually the way it works, but it might catch you out. Specifically, it's around something called auto launch. What is auto launch? Well, auto launch is a way that when you arm the model, it is ready to be thrown so that you can throw it. The plane will automatically stabilize and catch itself, climb gracefully into the sky. And then you can just cancel that by moving your elevator or aileron control on your radio and you can start to fly it about. Now, I use this a lot in my wings. Uh, it's one of the things that I love about iNav. It means that my launches are safe and work every single time. Will auto launch protect you from a really terrible throw? No, but what it will do is that if you give this a good throw into the air, it'll catch it and climb like, as my friend says, a homesick angel. The issue is, is that when you arm the model and it's in auto launch, you'll hear this beeping noise. And then when you are ready to throw it and you raise the throttle so that the system is ready to be thrown, you'll hear this noise. And while that noise is going on, the prop potentially isn't responding to the throttle. And this is exactly what confuses an awful lot of people. And basically it's auto launch. This is how it's supposed to work. So the way that auto launch works, and I'll show you in iNav where these settings are in a minute, so you can go and have a look, is that when you have the plane sat on the ground, you wait for it to get a GPS lock. Once it's got that GPS lock, you arm the model. It will then start the triple beeps. Once that is ready, you kind of get into position. You then raise the throttle to 100%. It starts double beeping. At that point, it will spin the prop at the back at the auto launch idle speed that you've set. By default, for lots of planes, it's set at zero throttle. So basically, it's not going to move at all. Once that double beep is going, it's ready to throw. You give it a good throw into the air. As soon as it detects that it's been thrown, it'll then spin the throttle up to the launch throttle, rise the nose up to the angle that you've set typically 20, 25 degrees is loads, and it will climb for the amount of time that you've set. That's the way it's supposed to work. So let's very quickly go into iNav and I'll show you how all the settings are done. So the places in iNav Configurator that you can look at to find out how auto launch is configured is in a handful of places. And again, I've covered this already on the channel, but as I've had a couple of people ask, let's go through it again. It's in configuration and down at the bottom of configuration, you will see that we have permanently enabled launch mode for fixed wing. It's this one here that's turned on. And that means whenever you arm the model, when it's ready to rock and roll, you have a GPS lock. When you arm the model, it's going to go into auto launch. And that is going to be able to be seen on the on-screen display. It'll actually say it if you have your messages on there. But also your radio, if you have the INAV Lewis script on the radio, will also announce that the plane has gone into angle mode because it's actually going to launch itself in angle mode, but it's going to climb away. The fact that permanently enable launch mode is turned on here is what is stopping the motor from responding in the way that you would expect. Basically, as soon as you arm it, it's waiting to be thrown. How auto launch actually performs is down here in advanced tuning. And there's a whole section here on the left hand side called fix wing auto launch settings. There are a couple of key things in here. Um, main one is you have something called the idle throttle. This will be the speed of the prop when you raise the throttle to launch it. And I have it spinning. It's something that I'm very comfortable with. Lots of people don't like to do it that way. So do what suits you. But I like to have a nice visual indicator that when I arm the model and then raise the throttle to 100%, the motor's going to spin at this value. The challenge it often comes is that this, by default, I think is set at 1,000, which means basically the motor doesn't run at all. So you raise the throttle, nothing happens, but the beeper is beeping away because the 
plane is telling you that it's in auto launch mode, it's ready to be thrown. So it's going to sit at idle throttle until it detects that it's being thrown. Once it's been detected that it's been thrown, it'll spin up the motor to this value here. I've got it at 1950 on my particular model. I like it to be quite aggressive so that it climbs confidently. And that is going to climb at, in my case, I've set it for 25 degrees. Um, then eventually it's going to time out after this particular time. Or if you move the sticks after you've thrown it, then it'll cancel auto launch. So this is the way that I have it set up. So the way it's going to work in practice is that I'll wait for the GPS to lock. That I will get that information on my on-screen display or on the INAV Lua script. I will then arm the model. The model will go into auto launch mode because we have it set in the configuration tab. And then what I need to do is raise the throttle. Then that will send this value to the motor. And by default, if it's set at a thousand, that means that nothing happens and the beep will be going while you're doing this as well. You'll have both the double beeps and the triple beeps, as I've talked about in the introduction, beeping away to let you know, yep, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm ready. And then once you throw it, it'll accelerate up to here. Just out of interest, the, these are kind of my standard settings for most of the models here. Uh, I do like to have the prop running, uh, even for throws. I uh, touch wood when I say things like this. We've never had an incident with a prop catching anybody's hands. The Chapito as well, with it being a five inch prop, it's relatively small and there is that additional protection underneath. Uh, by the time it's over your hand after you've thrown it, your hand is well out the way because your hand is actually moving on an arc and the plane is moving in a straight line. The reason that I like it like that, as I said, is because it's that visual indicator, but also it's much less time to spin up an already moving prop up to the speed that you want. Going from stock still to pretty much full throttle takes a period of time. That might be the difference between a successful auto launch and it landing in the grass with the throttle screaming at the back and everything going horribly wrong. So there you have it. Hopefully that helps. If you have a plane that when you arm it just starts beeping away and the throttle doesn't respond, guess what? That's exactly what's supposed to happen if you have auto launch turned on. Now you can disable auto launch and just chuck it and fly it as you would a normal plane. However, when auto launch is set up well, it means that you can throw it and it will safely, reliably climb to altitude without any of the hiccups and give you time to get your goggles on, get comfortable, get the radio ready. And then as soon as you move the radio, it'll cancel the auto launch and the angle mode that it uses to launch in and it'll drop back into whatever mode you've got selected. So hopefully that helps for those of you that have been stuck with this. It's just auto launch. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payland360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.